Hi, um, I want to say a few words on this incident involving Mike Tyson on a commercial uh, flight. Um, before getting to that, uh, a few words on the other big celebrity story at the moment, which that sounds almost vacuous, but I think um, in both cases there are um, serious wider implications, social implications, in terms of how um, how society views things. So that's the angle I'm taking rather than celebrity gossip. Um, on the other issue, which is the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, um, there was some evidence put forward uh, supposedly in favour of Amber Heard. Uh, but ironically, very few people are reading it that way. So basically the footage showed Johnny Depp uh, presumably drunk. Um, he had sunglasses on and some sort of feathered hat in his apartment. And, and he was annoyed or angry about something and was slamming cabinet doors and so on. Uh, and at one point he got, I think it was a camera that he was being recorded on and, and damaged it. But um, what's interesting is it's very obvious that her defence team or her, her team was using this to sort of show what a violent man he was. Um, on that point, there's a huge, huge difference between taking out aggression on inanimate objects um, versus aggression on a person, violence on a person. That's an important point. Uh, there was also some text apparently sent between Johnny Depp and his friend Paul Bettany, who's also an actor. Um, and they're unpleasant. There's no getting away from that. They're unpleasant text, very unpleasant. Um, in the text, he talks about browning her before burning her. And um, this is verbatim fucking the corpse. Um, that's horrible. That's a very unpleasant thing. But again, this in itself isn't evidence of any actual violence. Um, People were saying this This is rather demonstrative of someone who is at their wit's end. Um, that doesn't justify it. It's a horrible thing to text. But I think in this trial, what should be focused on is the actual physical evidence. Now, in the case of um, Amber Heard supposedly getting headbutted, Depp's point of view, Depp's perspective was this, was when he was trying to restrain her, one of her violent attacks on him. And in that struggle, she hit her head. In other words, it was accidental. Uh, apparently, she had a cough and there was no blood at the time. But uh, some minutes later, she appeared with this cloth covered in blood. And she said, nice going, Johnny, you broke my nose. Um, now, he investigated this apparently afterwards and found out that the so-called blood was actually nail varnish. So the more that comes out in this case, the more this woman seems to lack credibility. I am not going to say that Johnny Depp is totally innocent. I don't know. And it may be that when she addresses these things, when she takes a stand, it's a different perspective. So I'm not going to join the sort of bandwagon of Johnny Depp is innocent and she's guilty. Um, there may be more to it. And I want to look at it objectively. So, um, But all I would say is that someone, you know, slamming cabinet doors and so on, that's very different from physical violence against a person. And the point is, she has been recorded admitting her violence. She hasn't even denied it. All she does is deflect and try to downplay it. But she never, never says, um, I haven't struck you. She says she didn't punch him, but she did hit him. Um, that's semantics. The point is, she ha has been violent towards him. Um, so I, I really hope that... Um, that is addressed, you know, her violence is addressed, um, not just as a passive thing. Of course, steps should be scrutinised as well. In every case, there's two sides. But, um, yeah, the other big story, like I say, involves Mike Tyson. Um, this was a flight from San Francisco to Fort Lauderdale. It was an uh, airline called JetBlue, which I'm not familiar with. But basically, um, a guy who's now been revealed as one Melvin Townsend, 36 years old. Uh, you see a, a piece of footage on this. Apparently, it was acquired by TMZ, which is a trashy company. It's a trashy website. I'm reluctant to you know, talk about anything from them. But that's what it was obtained, obtained from. They were who it was obtained from, I should say. Um and in the video, you clearly see the guy being a nuisance. 
he's loud, he's, um, the audio isn't very clear, but it's very, very obvious that he's not just seeking an autograph as he claimed. It's very obvious that he's, you know, mouthing off, he's, he's physically standing up behind uh, Tyson's uh, aisle and just really um, being a nuisance. Now, I've never had to deal with a drunk on a flight. I've dealt with drunks, not just me, other passengers as well, on buses uh, and on trains. And I think a drunk person on a form, on any form of transport, especially a plane, is absolutely one of the most obnoxious kind of people you can come across. Because in an enclosed space, especially a plane, you can't get away from them. You're just mouthing off, um, being obnoxious, just throwing their weight around. And it is, it is utterly antisocial. It's potentially dangerous, actually. Because, you know, if they interfere with any safety mechanisms, it's potentially dangerous. In this country, I feel that we are far, far too lenient with such people. Uh, I remember cases where, and the thing is, this isn't like, you know, sometimes the so-called professional people, lawyers, I've heard of getting drunk on flight um, behaving like this. What happens is the flight usually um, bans them. They're arrested on grounding. But then some weak judge gives them a tap on the wrist. That's what happens in the UK. And they're not even they're not even put into jail, which I think they should be. Um, I think we need to, in this country at least, this is obviously the state, but in this country I think we need to take a much, much harder line with drunks on public transport. I think they're disgusting. I think they're selfish, obnoxious people. And um, I think they need to be made an example of, really. Um, I think we need to take a much tougher line about uh, against that sort of thing because you know when people pay for a train journey or a bus journey, especially a plane journey, it's no small cash. And what we want is as stress free a journey as possible. You want to get from destination A to destination B as stress free as possible. You want a pleasant flight or a pleasant train journey. You don't want some obnoxious stranger getting in your face. Uh, and if you're famous, you know, that's, you're going to be a target of such people. Um, so this excuse that he was just seeking an autograph is is ridiculous. Now, Tyson at one point obviously lost his temper and turned around and basically beat the guy. Um, and the man had an injury. You could see there was a sort of bloody mark around his head. I, I don't imagine many people would be very sympathetic. But, but that doesn't mean that Tyson should have done that. What Tyson should have done is got the cabin crew involved. He should have pressed the button on his seat. He should have called someone over and said, look, this guy is harassing me. Can you do something about it? That's how he should have dealt with the situation rather than just lashing out. After the whole Will Smith thing at the Oscars, there's a lot of debate around um, violence in society. And unfortunately, in the case of Mike Tyson, he has a long uh, record of trouble outside the ring. Uh, that's no secret. Um, on this occasion, though, I really do think he wasn't the instigator. I think that this guy, Melvin Townsend, um, who apparently himself has a criminal record, was being obnoxious. He was just trying to, uh, I imagine, uh, invoke some sort of reaction. Oh, look, I'm going to be famous if I annoy Mike Tyson. Um, yeah, well, he's famous for all the wrong reasons. But I, I can't imagine many people will sympathise with him. Unfortunately, what's going to happen is... Um, in a court of law, you know, saying that I provoked me won't be used. It won't be admissible as an uh, admissible, excuse me, as an excuse. Um, because Mike Tyson's a former heavyweight boxer, the implications of being assaulted by him are different than if it was anyone else. Um, so you know, probably a judge will be quite harsh on Tyson. Um, again, I I'm not saying he should have lashed out, but I think it's understandable, quite frankly. Because someone like this who, you know, just gets in your face and will not back off and they're just being obnoxious, anyone would be frustrated by that. But like I say, probably what Tyson should have done is just contacted the cabin crew and let them deal with it. Um, as a more general thing in terms of dealing with such people, I'm, I'm quite favourable to air marshals provided, and this is a big, big caveat, they're properly trained. What we don't want to have is a situation like that elderly Vietnamese man who was dragged off the flight 
Um, I think it was Delta Airlines a few years. It was a controversial incident. And you don't want um, law enforcement agents abusing their power. But the fact of the matter is, this is not a like, once-in-a-lifetime sort of occurrence. Disruptive behaviour on flights is all too common, especially in the United States. And it's all unfair on other passengers, it's all unfair on the cabin crew, and it's potentially dangerous. So I think there needs to be a more robust method to deal with such people. Um, I've heard it argued that alcohol should just be banned on flights. Well, I'm not sure if that would help because often these people get tanked up in the airport lounge. It's not necessarily alcohol they've got on the flight. They'll get tanked up on an alcohol lounge. If you have a plane delayed by, say, four hours, especially in the UK, you get big groups of stag parties or hen parties or um, football so-called fans tanking themselves up, um, it's a recipe for disaster. So maybe there should be some sort of policy of, like, say, a two-drink limit or a three-drink limit at the very most. But drunk people and transport is an absolutely toxic mix. Drunk people can always be a problem, but especially on a form of transport. I, I have very strong views on this because... Um, you know, when I've been on the Tyne and Wayne Metro at night time and drunks get on, I do get anxious because drunk people have no inhibitions. They don't know what they're doing or they don't have, they don't care what they're doing and they won't think twice about harassing strangers. Um, so I hope that, uh, it's interesting that this guy wasn't cooperating with the police. Now, if he's a victim of assault, which, you know, his friends and he are claiming, then um, he was just trying to get an autograph. Why wouldn't he cooperate with the police? Surely if he's a victim of assault and he was just asking for an autograph, he would be angry. He'd want you know Tyson to be prosecuted. So why is he not cooperating? Is it perhaps because he knows that he was in the wrong and he provoked the situation? Just these people who... Um, Mind, TMZ is no better. It's kind of ironic they've obtained the footage because TMZ employs paparazzi people who are, you know, the stalkers. They're obnoxious creeps. And um, that's why, you know, uh, I don't think TMZ should be seen as... Fortunately, though, the thing with TMZ is often with these sort of celebrities, they are the primary source, unfortunately. Um, it's just a pity they are so on that side of journalism, of aggressive paparazzi-style antics. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Um, just one last disclaimer. I'm not a fan of Mike Tyson. I don't care much for the man. You know, some people treat him like, oh, he's a legend. How can you question Tyson? All this? I don't much like Mike Tyson. I don't think, um, put it this way, I think he's a man who's had a lot of trouble in his life. I think he's a man who has um, done some pretty bad things. Um, but I do think that Tyson is genuinely trying to go on the straight and narrow, so to speak, but there might always be that side in him. I don't think he, I honestly don't think he's the wild man of the past. I think this was just a natural response and I think other people would have lashed out as well. But, um, I'm just saying that because I'm not coming at this as a Tyson fan. Um, I'm coming at this from an objective point of view which is the situation, looking at the situation. Let me know your thoughts.